Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13.4 Developer Beta 1 has been out for a few days. I've been using it on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, but if you're wondering why you haven't seen it yet for the public beta testers, that's because Apple has not pushed it out yet. Now they do this from time to time where they don't push out public betas until developer beta 2 comes out so we may see that this time around it's hard to say or they could push it this coming monday so we don't really know in the past they've actually done developer beta 2 and made that the same as public beta 1. it does make that a little bit confusing but we have seen that before now i've been using it primarily on my 11 pro max and my 2018 ipad pro that i have here and the experience has been okay but based off the YouTube community poll, I've taken all of that information, compiled it to talk about how it's been for you. I'll also talk about how it's been for me, and then we'll cover battery and things like that. Now, the first thing is the actual experience has been okay, but there's a major problem with it for me. So the experience using it as far as performance and everything like that, I haven't had any freeze ups or lockups. I did have some lockups when it came to iOS 13.3.1 on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. It would lock up in settings and do some weird things, but I haven't had any of those issues, but I have said, had some other issues. And the first issue that I've had is weird connectivity issues with LTE and Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. So when I'm at home, maybe I'm on Wi-Fi. Sometimes I'll go to Safari. Maybe I'll open up Safari and then go to Apple, for example. We'll go to apple.com. And sometimes it just doesn't load. It will hang. Even though it's fast on my computers and things like that, it will hang on iPhone. If I turn off Wi-Fi and jump over to LTE, the switching has no issues, but sometimes it just works fine on LTE and then it doesn't work and it's kind of strange. I've had that happen a couple times, but the more annoying bug that I've had happen has to do with messages and that's more, more annoying because you use messages a lot. So let me show you what I mean. Let me open photos here. And in photos, what I have is a screen capture of my messages that I've been talking to other people. Now I've blanked out some of the information, but if you take a look here at the top, these are some people I, were t I was talking to before and you'll see I said thanks or someone else did, but thanks and thanks, it actually shows up in someone else's information, even though I was talking to them in this one, and it sort of duplicates itself and messages won't send until I actually close the application and then reopen it and it works. Now this happens every single time I've tried rebooting and everything else. It happens every time I send a message or try and receive a message on the actual messaging app itself. So sometimes sending messages work fine, but receiving them, I'll always get those duplicates. And it seems to happen more in group texts than in individual texts, but it seems to be such a problem that I'll either revert back on this one, or maybe I'll use a different phone for, for the next few days until beta two is out. It's really a pain and something I've seen and other people have complained about as well. So those are the only two issues I've actually had with this particular beta. I've had no issues on the iPad or anything like that. And I've had no issues on other phones. And in fact, a lot of you have said you you haven't had too many issues as well, but some of the things I mentioned you've had as well. So the first thing is the LTE issue where it might just drop. And the same is true with phone calls. Now I haven't had this issue, but I don't place a whole lot of phone calls, but some people were saying not only were they having weird LTE issues where it would sort of just slow down all of the sudden, but then other people were also saying that their phone calls signal would drop and they'd have to wait a minute or go into airplane mode in order to get it to work again. So there's definitely some issues with this beta and maybe that's why they haven't pushed out the public beta yet. Now, the only other issue that someone has mentioned is that seems to be fairly prominent is an issue with Apple Pencil, sometimes not working right or the keyboard not working right. But in general, it seems to be a pretty good beta other than the, the things I mentioned. So performance overall has been really good for most people. No app crashes really. Speed is really good for most people. And also battery has been pretty good out of all of the comments. And we'll take a look at some of those in a little bit out of all of the comments, only one or two people said that it wasn't that good. The majority of people said that it was great compared to iOS 13.3.1. So as far as battery overall, we'll go into battery here. Let me take a look and battery health. Some people will always comment and say battery health went down after this update. And that's only because it rechecks what your actual physical battery is doing after the update. So this update does not bring your battery down, but rather it just checks it and sees what the actual physical battery capacity is at this point. 
Now, as far as my battery usage, well, today I was actually working around the house and I was kind of busy, so there's not going to be a ton of usage. In fact, you'll see I only have one hour and 20 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 13 minutes of screen off time playing music and things like that. If we go back a couple days, I was able to get three hours and 44 minutes of screen on time and one hour and 47 minutes of screen off time, and that was using about 50% of my battery. Now, depending on the day is going to vary greatly. So you'll see the next day, two days ago, I got two hours and six minutes of screen on time, one hour and 14 minutes of screen off time, and I didn't even use a quarter of my battery. So that day I got about 10 to 12 hours of screen on time and multiple hours of screen off time without any problem whatsoever. So this seems to be pretty good. It just depends what you're doing. So on that day, I use Safari a lot and Twitter. And in general, it's just been pretty good as far as battery. It's been good enough that I haven't even looked at it because my battery has been 50% or more by the time I go to bed. So it's been great for me. Now, as far as the YouTube community poll, quite a few of you voted. And one thing I wanted to mention is RAM management. That particular app just reloaded. None of you complained about RAM management at all. And in fact, I did notice just YouTube reloading. So that's really the only app I've seen reload, but let's take a look at the YouTube community poll. Now this community poll actually had less participation than normal. And I expected that because there was no public beta. And so less people are using this beta, but quite a few of you commented, even if you were on iOS 13.3.1 or older, and let's take a look at the results. So 12% of you said it was great. 2% said terrible. 5% said, okay, but some bugs. 65% of you said I'm on iOS 13.3.1 or older and 16% of you are on Android. So I still appreciate you participating, even though it's not really related to what we're talking about here. Now you'll see there's 106 comments. I've read every single one of those and I really appreciate you commenting. I took all of that information to compile what I talked about earlier. So let's take a look at these. I'll sort by oldest first. There we go. And you'll see the first one says, need some improvement. LTE is horrible on the 10R. So these particular issues seem to be across all devices. So even if you have an iPhone 6S or an iPhone 7, 7 Plus, any of them seem to be affected by the same issues iPhone 11 Pro Max, occasionally the YouTube app will not respond. Not sure if it's the iOS's fault or the app's fault, but didn't happen on 13.3.1. Otherwise, everyone or everything else seems fine. Mail app still has issues as previously talked about in other videos. And I did forget to mention mail a little bit. Mail still has a few issues, but it definitely seems better than before iPhone SE performance on 13.4 beta one is great, but battery timing isn't good as compared to iOS 13.3.1. I think you mean battery life. Great on the Pro Max and iPad Pro, Apple Pencil is buggy, keyboard still needs work, especially gestures and how it changes my words if it doesn't understand the phrase I'm writing. It also randomly doesn't recognize words changes tall to y'all for me and my nephew, for example, which is kind of an odd bug. Battery life is epic on my iPhone 7, but my AirPods is, I don't know, it's not working properly. The best iOS so far for me, my iPhone 11 Pro Max didn't heat up anymore while using apps like Facebook and Messenger, but this time YouTube went bad. Sometimes I can't play any video at all, and sometimes the phone can't keep YouTube open in the background. Refreshes every time I open four or five apps, and that's the problems I have so far, I think is what you're saying. Pretty stable so far for me on iPhone 11, 64 gigabyte. Haven't found any bugs yet and can't wait for the final release. Thanks, Aaron, for the videos. They're very detailed. Thanks, I appreciate that. Now I'll read a couple more. I'm looking specifically for those related to iOS 13.4 betas. I'm having this odd data drop type of deal. When I try to load something, I gotta either wait an extra amount of time on 13.4 or reload. Also happened on 13.3.1 official, not finally beta, not final beta yet or though, and today I have iMessage issues not delivering. And like I said, those are the two areas I've had bugs with as well. Is the public beta out yet? No, it's not out yet. And the YouTube audio bug is back on 13.4. So that means audio overlapping when you're playing video. And that's it. There wasn't as many comments this time. And I was looking specifically for 13.4 comments, like I mentioned before. And I would expect probably a March event. Maybe I'll talk about that. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. But iPhone SE 
2 or iPhone 9 is still rumored to be coming out in a month or so, hopefully, but we'll have to wait and see what Apple does with that. And that's really all we're waiting for at this point. I'm looking forward to iOS 13.4 beta 2, so it will hopefully fix the major issues I'm having. And hopefully they release a public beta soon, like I talked about before. I would love to see them release public beta 1, but they may not do that until public beta 2. And based off Apple's current release schedule, it could be this coming week or this week or the following week. Usually with early betas, they're on a two week cycle. So we don't really know for sure what they're going to do, but I would love to see them release an update to fix maybe issues with messages and things like that. And if you're having those issues, make sure you report them in the feedback app. Apple takes that information, compiles it, takes the most pressing issues and then fixes those and works their way back. So little tiny issues that are really annoying to us, they will work on eventually, but they'll prioritize them based on things like your phone actually working and Wi-Fi working based on maybe a small little bug you might see with text or something like that. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper as I always do in the description. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.